United States had conspired to overthrow the legitimate and lawful government. In fact, if you so look Iraq at was wrong. United States Public Law 103-150 clearly states that the Americans stole the Hawaiian nation and the Hawaiian people never we gave it up. about Iraq. But how is it possible that we talk about Kuwait? How did we get from Iraq to Hawaii? Because I believe in international Kuwait. law. Okay, but I'm asking you about a specific example. If law, if law is applied arbitrarily and it's applied unevenly, then it's not law at all. It's the color of law. So was it now, lawful? Now, if law is to be applied in favor of the Kuwait, the Kuwaiti government at the expense of the Iraqis because they're victimized by the Iraqis, then the Hawaiian nation needs to be honored as well against the, the brutal and oppressive policies okay, of the United can, can States we, and can, Hawaii. Can we get back it to the question? Can we back, okay, back, we'll to, get the back question. to the question? You've, you've had your run around the houses. Can we go back to the question, which is, was Iraq justified in attacking Kuwait and invading Kuwait? No, no, it wasn't. But it does, that, that, that question does ignore the fact that the lines that were drawn by the British were basically an insurance policy that there would be division and fighting and hostility and border disputes and all sorts of so stuff. So you're making excuses the for the fact that he went into for Kuwait. It, let's not ignore the historical reality behind why that invasion occurred in the first place. I'm not justifying it. As I've said, I believe in international law. But when international law is applied in one way, where the powerful dictate when law is applied, so the world that is nothing him. but the color of law. You went to fight the... the you thought it was, was a just war. I was war. young and I was a bit You thought it was a just a, war. I thought there was some legitimacy to it, yes, but I didn't have, I did not have the understanding. And you that still I do. I think there was some legitimacy to it. What action did you see? Well, I, my unit earned a uh, combat action ribbon. Uh, I never fired my weapon, but I do know what it sounds like to have a bullet fly by. Um, as I said, my unit did earn that combat action ribbon, so I guess technically I've seen combat. My job was in the unit I was with to secure the road that led from Kuwait City to Baghdad, which is otherwise known as the Highway of Death, where 20,000 plus Iraqis, retreating Iraqis, were slaughtered by cowards flying planes, pushing buttons, sending missiles down to people who wanted to live. You were, were a loyal Marine. You were doing, I did my doing job. what you thought was your patriotic duty. I did the job that I was called to do, yes. The job that you were paid to do. Yes. Were you scared of dying? I contemplated death, yes. I did reflect on my mortality. I even began... In what terms? Well, I realized that I might not survive and that I might not see those that I love very much again. And uh, that causes you to reflect. You did the job, but you did the job willingly. You were loyal, you were committed, you'd went, gone through pretty rigorous training. You must have believed in what you were doing. I knew that Nobody the, forced you into the Marines, did I, they? No, of course not. I, I, I have, I've admitted on record it was the, perhaps the stupidest thing I've ever done, but in, in the end it's actually turned out to be one of the best things because... But the, at the time you were proud of the unit, proud of the people you served with. There would be a little bit more explanation needed, but essentially, no. Yes. Give me, give me the explanation. Well, there, I was, I was treated in an arbitrarily negative way while I was in the Marine Corps because I spoke out on something, and this was something. You were a difficult guy. Yeah, I've always been the kind of guy who doesn't accept power uh, being abused, no matter who's delivering it. Or, or a problem with authority, which was. I don't have a problem with authority when it's just, but when it's being abused, I have a big problem with it, no matter where it comes from. You were in an altercation about air conditioning on board a ship in the really Mediterranean. seems quite trivial, but yes, bit let me petty, explain it. petty, wasn't it? Well, the thing is that the troops that have to deal with the, the reality of all sorts of duties, who are being told to do something by their superiors, who are telling them that leadership by example is what the Marine Corps is all about. I, find, I think that I had a responsibility to expose these so-called leaders for what they were, which was not leading by example, and I was punished as a result of speaking out. Now, I could have done this anonymously, what I did, and this is a longer story, and I don't want to waste too much time on it, but I, I could no, have... No, but it says something about you, have, doesn't I, it? It does. I could have done this anonymously. I could have reported them anonymously, but I owned up to it. I said, I'm the one who did it, and because of that, I paid very dearly. Because of this argument over air conditioning, you actually abused them. You, you, talk, you were accused of, of abusing, you, you accused them of abusing their power, didn't you? I don't accuse it. They did abuse their power. They had no that's, right that's to... That's a pretty serious charge over air conditioning, isn't it? No, they had no right to close off a passageway on a ship. That is reserved to the captain and the highest enlisted Navy, Navy personnel on board a ship. They had no right to do it. It was an abuse of power. They were making life more difficult for others, and all the while they're telling us to lead by example. And you still think you did the right thing? Absolutely. You still don't think it was a petty thing and a petty quarrel no, to have No, definitely not. I stand Even by Even though you say a lot of Marines would no doubt describe me as a provocateur or bad apple, but to my mind, I did the right thing. I did do the right thing. And all the jobs that I was required to do, such as carrying a heavy pack, long distances, and knowing how to fire my weapon, knowing tactics, I did those things extremely well. I carried myself with honor. I stood by what I did. I owned up to it honestly, and I paid a price. 
while serving your country in the Marines, you knew about your country's history, you knew that it had done bad things in Chile, for example, in Latin America, things that the Clinton administration in many cases actually apologized for later. But it was okay then. No, actually, I didn't know those things. Why not? The first one, oh, because I was stupid, and I didn't learn it, and I was lied to, because they didn't teach me these things in school. In fact, I didn't even know what the U.S. US Constitution said. You know that said. every country does bad things, or has done bad things in its yeah. history. Yeah, but I also know that the United States has had an incredibly, uh, enormous amount of bad things. In fact, I have no question about the United States being the number one terrorist of the 20th and now the 21st centuries. We look that's back at the That's a pretty emotive name to throw at a true, country that's just is. suffered, you know, September the 11th. Yeah, 3,000 lives compared to, say, 3 million in Southeast Asia. How incredible it is that we value white life. White life, it seems, is worth about 10,000 or 20,000 or 100,000 dark-skinned lives. It's sick, it's twisted, it's criminal, it's hypocritical, and I want no part of it. But isn't it a bit ludicrous to describe the government of America as criminal, democratically elected, rather than, let's say, Saddam Hussein, who remains in power by torturing and killing his opponents. It's a bit you know, ludicrous to compare them. Not at way, all, not it? at all, because I, I do not endorse Saddam Hussein, but at least he's confined it generally to his region or his own country. America. Well, that makes killing fun. No, it, it does not. I don't endorse Saddam Hussein, nor anyone who kills or tortures people, but America has exported their terror all around the world. You know that, and I know it. After the Marines, you left, what, eight months after the Gulf War? Yeah, roughly. Lived yeah. in Hawaii, as you've said. Set, set up your own business? Well, that was a few years later that I moved to Hawaii, yes. Why did you start to hate America? I don't hate America. In fact, I don't hate anyone. I don't even hate George Bush. But you I gave up him. your U.S. citizenship. I renounced my U.S. citizenship, yes. What, is a slap in the face? No, not at all. Citizenship is allegiance. And in order to be allegiant to something, you need to agree with what it's doing. I don't agree with the United States exporting terror around the world. I don't agree with paying into the largest military budget in the world, more than every other nation combined spending on military. I don't agree with that. Now, as a citizen, basically, you have an allegiance to that. What I did was logical. I said, I have no part of that. I want no part of it. So therefore, you can take your citizenship, and I will walk away. But going to a country like Iraq, which systematically violates human rights, and using that country as a platform to attack your own is an act of hatred, isn't it? No, I definitely don't feel hatred. Absolutely not. If anything, I feel anger, and I'll be the first one to admit that. I'm angry, and I think any logical, thinking, compassionate person would be angry when they see people being killed all around the world, especially when it's being done in their name. But I'm not hateful, and I don't let the anger control me. I use it the best way I can, the most constructive way I can. Really, why not inside the love, country? Why not, why not go to the States? I would have ended up in... I, you, maybe, you know there was, maybe you know there was a bench warrant issued for my arrest as well, an $11,000 bench warrant, which is posted on my website if people want to look at it. I was being persecuted, and I probably would have ended up as one of the, one of the many in the world's largest prison population and growing. You'd have had a Someone lot of publicity claiming, in the process. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't even have heard of me if I didn't end up for some uh, bogus charge. Have you become a pacifist? I'm not a passive anything, and I think Gandhi said that as well. I believe in action. Well, I'm interested in you. Pa are you a pacifist? Do you believe that no. there's a case for going to war? I believe that self-defense is the only legitimate reason for war, and this whole preemptive doctrine of, of the Bush administration is sheer suicide. By the preemptive doctrine, Pakistan should invade India, India should invade Pakistan, North Korea should invade South Korea, the Israelis Can we just should stay attack in the Palestinians. Can we just to stay in the That's region the where we are? No, because the whole Why world not? is connected. We cannot disconnect these things. They're all connected. We're trying to deal based with on the your, Well, you're not going to all these places. You're going to Iraq. But based Iraq. on the preemptive doctrine, basically every nation that has an enemy would have the right to attack their enemy. You reject war with Iraq, but what do you put in its place? You said, I would argue that if Saddam did have those weapons, we should establish a dialogue. What do you think the UN has been doing with him for the last 12 years? Well, Kofi Annan has been to Baghdad. Countless UN officials have been to talk to him. Arab states have talked to him. The Saudis, the Arab League has had him in. Discussion after discussion. Why would your dialogue be different? I'm not saying that it would be. And all I can do is say what I say and hope that it ends, it ends up being con constructive in some way. But what right do you have, or what do right do our nations have, to go in there and tell these people what to do? Do you know what kind of conditions black people have lived under in America? Do you know about the genocide that continues to be perpetuated? Why do you always widen it out? Why can't we stay with this particular subject? Because so I, you think I, I that find you throw it everything into the pot. They're all different situations. They all have different nuances. You can't throw everything into the same pot, stir it up, and, and make one case for action no. against everybody. What you keep doing is pointing the finger at someone else and ignoring the responsibility of our I'm own government. I'm asking governments. what you suggest. You